Hey guys, we are going to go through a review on how to write and solve equations. They're going to go from really easy equations to more complicated equations and everything in between. Um, so let's take a look. First question, translate the following sentence into an equation. The difference of three times the number x and seven is four more than five times that number. If I wanted to start writing that out, okay, for the difference of three times the number x, so three x, difference means subtract, so the difference of three times the number x and seven is, when I see is, that's my equal sign, is four more than, than's a flipping word, five times that number, x, so five x plus four. That's exactly what my equation should look like. I'm gonna look at my answer choices, and I see that, oh, it's actually the first answer choice. Awesome. Next one, translate the following equation into a sentence. So I see I have five and then open parentheses x minus two. Whenever you see that, that's gonna look like five times the difference, right? So five times the difference. Difference means subtraction. So I know my first answer choice can't be right. So five times the difference of x and two is equal to, and then I've got four times x plus seven. So let's see the first one, the second one here. Five times the difference of x and two is equal to the product of four and x increased by seven. Increased means add, so that looks good. Let me look at the other choices. So that third answer actually starts with five plus the difference, and we don't have five plus the difference, we have five times the difference. And the last one, five times the difference of x and two is the same as four plus x times seven. No, we're not multiplying x and seven, so it's definitely the second option. Next one, solve the equation, number three. All right, so in this equation of x plus seven equals 11, what I always tell my students is to look at the equation and ask yourself, do you have numbers on both sides? Here we do, we have a seven and an 11. I would then ask you which number is on the same side of the equation as the variable. It's a positive seven. How do you get rid of a positive seven? You subtract seven. And so we go ahead and subtract seven on both sides. My seven simplify out to zero and I'm left with x equals four. Friendly problem, friendly answer for sure. Next one, number four. So I have m plus, m plus in parentheses negative five equals negative 10. Now we don't wanna ever deal with negative, two uh, double signs rather. So when I see m plus negative five, that really means m minus five equals negative 10. And then when I look at that, I ask myself, okay, do I have numbers on both sides? Yes. Which number is on the same side of my variable? It's my negative five. How do you undo a negative five? You would add five. So I would go ahead and add five on both sides. I bring down my m, cross out my fives, equals negative 10 plus five is a negative five. All right, next question. Another one-step equation. So I have six x equals negative 42. Now, I don't see that I have numbers on both sides. I have a variable on this side being multiplied by six, and I have a number on the right-hand side. Six and x are side by side. Side by side means multiply. The way we undo multiplication is we divide. So we're gonna divide both sides by six. That way, I get my x by itself. My answer is then x equals negative 42 divided by six is a negative seven. Remember, a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and so my answer is negative seven. Next one, number six. So this is a good one-step problem. It's p divided by four. Don't forget that a fraction means division equals negative six. How do we undo the fact that p is being divided by four? Well, the opposite of dividing would be to multiply. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both sides of my equation by four. And when I do that, my fours will simplify out over on the left and I am left with p equals negative six times four is negative 24. Next question, number seven. All right, so I have six fifths D, so six fifths D equals negative 18. Now I see that six fifths is being multiplied by D. What I really wanna do is I wanna divide both sides by six fifths, but when you divide by a fraction, what you're really doing is multiplying by the reciprocal. What I tell my students to do is anytime you see a fraction being multiplied by a variable, and we wanna undo that, we use the multiplicative inverse. The multiplicative inverse is to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of the fraction we're trying to get rid of. So here, if 6 fifths is being multiplied by d, and I want to get d by itself, I multiply both sides by 5 sixths. It's the multiplicative inverse. That's because, look what's going to happen here. 
my fives will simplify out, my sixes will simplify out, and I'm left with D. And that's what we want, that we want the variable to be by itself. So now I go ahead and do the math. Negative 18 times 5, so you multiply negative 18 times 5, which is negative 90. And then I would have to do negative 90 divided by 6. Now I can see my answer choices. I can see some decimals. I definitely know it's one of the negative answers. Um, negative 90 divided by 6. Think about it. Negative 15. Good. Next question. All right, so we have 4 times 5x minus 1 minus 5 equals 31. I see I have 4 being multiplied by 5x minus 1, then subtracted by 5, and that's got to equal to 31. So I've got a couple things going on here. The distributive property is really standing out to me, so maybe I want to do that first. There's a couple different ways to solve this equation, by the way, guys. No matter what, you're going to get the same answer. So then this would be 20x minus 4 minus 5 equals 31. I then notice I have a negative 4 and a negative 5. They're on the same side of the equation, so I need to combine those like terms. So now this is 20x minus 9 equals 31. And now I can ask myself, what do I have on both sides of my equation? Do I have numbers on both sides? Yes. I have a negative 9 and a positive 31. Which one of those numbers is on the same side as my variable? It's the negative 9. How do you undo a negative 9? You add 9. So now I'm left with 20x equals 40. 20x are side by side. Side by side means multiply. I go ahead and I divide both sides by 20. And I end up getting my answer of x equals 2. Now, a different strategy would be that maybe someone would have added 5 on both sides first. You could have totally done that. I promise you, you'll get the exact same final answer. Next one, number 9. All right, so number 9 looks like 6 times y minus 1 equals 8 minus 4y. So definitely what's screaming out to me first is to do my distributive property. 6 times y is 6y. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6 equals 8 minus 4y. So I notice I have numbers on both sides and I have variables on both sides. You can technically do anything you want to do first here, okay? So for me, I look at that and I, I tend to like to get rid of my negative values. So I might say, oh, you know what? I want to add 6 on both sides because that's easy. A way to get rid of a negative 6 is to add 6. And so now I have 6y equals 14 minus 4y. Then I ask myself, okay, what do I have on both sides now? It's variables. Which variable? do I want to get rid of, the 6y or the negative 4y? Well, we never want to get rid of the 6y here because then we'll have nothing on the left-hand side. We want to get rid of the variable that's on the same side as our number. I see it's a negative 4y. How do we get rid of a negative 4y? We would add 4y. So I would go ahead and add 4y on both sides. So now I have 10y equals 14. Last step, 10 and y are side by side. Side by side means multiply. We're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 10. And 14 divided by 10 is a decimal, and it would give us 1.4. Excellent. All right, number 10. 7 is added to a number. Okay, so 7 is added to a number. So 2 is a flipping word, so I'm going to write x plus 7. 7 is added to a number. The result is divided by 3. This result is then added to 15 to make 42. What is the number? Okay, so I translated that out. I'm now going to solve it. Do I have numbers on both sides? I absolutely do. I have a 15 and a 42, which are numbers on the same side as my variable, the 15. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 15 on both sides. I'm now left with x plus 7 divided by 3 equals 42 minus 15 is 27. I see that this x plus 7 is being divided by 3. I need to undo the division. The opposite of dividing would be to multiply. So now I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 3. The reason for this is, is I get to simplify out my 3s. I'm then left with x plus 7 equals 27 times 3 is 81. I have numbers on both sides. Which number do I get rid of to get the x by itself? It would be the 7 by subtracting 7. And my final answer I get is x equals 70. Okay, next one, number 11. Translate the equation into a sentence. So I'm going to make this the easiest I possibly can. So 
if I started that out, it would be four times the difference of x and 3 is equal to, I could say 6 plus x, I could say 6 added by x, I could say the sum of 6 and x. There's so many different options. And that's it for number 11. Number 12, tw translate the sentence into an equation. The sum of x and 3 is the same as, so the sum of x and 3, so number 12 is x plus 3, is the same as, so that's equals, the product of 5 and x. Well, product means multiplication, so that's just simply 5 times x. Number 13, solve the equation. So here I have f minus 9 equals negative 3. If I was to ask you right now, do you have numbers on both sides? The answer would be yes. Which number is on the same side of the equation as my variable? You would tell me it's the negative 9. How do you undo a negative 9 or get rid of a negative 9? You add 9. So I'd go ahead and add 9 on both sides. I'm then left with f. My 9 simplify out. And negative 3 plus 9 is 6. And so that would be my answer for number 13. Number 14. Negative 71 equals m plus 4. Okay. Do I have numbers on both sides? Yes. Which number is on the same side of the equation as my variable? The 4. How do you get rid of a positive 4? You subtract 4. So minus 4 minus 4. I'm left with negative 75 equals m. Number 15. Negative 9 equals 36x. I don't see I have numbers on both sides, but I do see 36 are side by side. Side by side means multiply. What's the opposite operation of multiplying? It's dividing. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by the number that's being multiplied by x, which is my 36. That way my 36s are gone, and I'm left with x equals. Now, negative 9 divided by 36, that's going to give me a fraction. 9 goes into 36 four times, so that would be a fraction of negative 1 fourth. If you were to put it in your calculator, you would get negative 0.25. They mean the same thing. Number 16, some fraction work. Okay, number 16. So we have 1 half x minus 5 equals 1 third x plus 2. Now there are definitely more than one strategy, plenty of strategies actually, for solving this equation. But what I want you to do is I want you to clear your fractions out. So when I look at my fractions, I see I have two different denominators. I have a 2 and I have a 3. You want to think about the least common multiple of 2 and 3. The least common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. If I multiply both sides of this equation by 6, so I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around both sides of this equation, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 6, we're going to clear our fractions out, and we're not going to have fractions in our equation. And then it's going to be really easy to work with. So ready? 6 times 1 half x, well half of 6 is 3, so that's 3x. And then 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. No fractions. Let's do the same thing on the right-hand side. 6 times 1 third x. Well, a third of 6 is 2, so that would be 2x. Okay, And then I would do 6 times 2, and 6 times 2 is 12. That looks like a much friendlier equation to work with. So now I look at it. I notice I have numbers and variables on both sides. I can technically get rid of whatever I want first. I like to get rid of negative things, so I look at the negative 30, and I say, okay, cool. Maybe I'll start this by adding 30 on both sides. And then I have 3x equals 2x plus 42. Then I look, what do I have on both sides? I have variables. Okay, which variable do I get rid of, the 3x or the 2x? You always get rid of the variable that's on the same side as your number. So I'm going to get rid of my 2x, so minus 2x, minus 2x. Well, 3x minus 2x is just 1x, and so I have x equals 42. So it looks like a more challenging problem from the beginning, but it actually works out very friendly. Number 17. The number 17 says 5x divided by 3 minus 1 equals 7. Okay, I'm going to ask you the same questions I've been asking you. What do you have on both sides of your equation? You have numbers. You have a negative 1 and a 7. Which number is on the same side as my variable? It's my negative 1. How do we get rid of a negative 1? We add 1, so we're going to do plus 1 plus 1. We now have 5x divided by 3 equals 8. 
I see 5x is being divided by 3. What's the opposite operation of dividing by 3? It is multiplying by 3. So we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 3. So now I'm left with 5x equals 24. Last step, 5 and x are side by side. Side by side means multiply. Divide both sides by 5. And that is our answer, 24 fifths. No need for a decimal. If we don't want to, you could put it in a decimal. It's not a big deal. Um, 4.8 if you need that. Number 18, 4 times 2x plus 2 equals negative 6 times negative x minus 4. All right, so we've got some distributive property here. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 2 is 8. A little more distributive property. Negative 6 times negative x. A negative times a negative is a positive. Negative 6 times negative 4. A negative times a negative is a positive. I see I have numbers and variables on both sides. I can do whatever I want first. Maybe I decide to get rid of the 6x on both sides. So now I'm left with 2x plus 8 equals 24. What do I have on both sides now? Numbers or variables? Numbers. Which one do I get rid of? The 8 or the 24? I get rid of the 8 because it's on the same side as my variable. So now I'm left with 2x equals 16. Last step, 2 and x are side by side, which means multiply. We do the opposite operation. We divide both sides by 2. And our final answer is x equals 8. Easy, easy. Last two questions. Number 19, find three consecutive integers whose sum is 120. So when we do consecutive integer problems, n is going to be our first integer. Consec next consecutive integer, integers go by ones. So the next one would be n plus 1 is the second integer. And then n plus 2 would be the third integer. So the equation that I would set up here is n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 equals 120. First integer plus the second plus the third. This ends up being n plus n plus n is 3n. 1 plus 2 is 3 equals 120. And now I solve my equation. What do I have on both sides? Numbers or variables? I have numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract my 3 on both sides. I end up getting 3n equals 117. Divide both sides by 3. My final answer is n equals 39. So that means 39 is the first integer. So if 39 is the first integer, the next integer would be 40, and the next one would be 41. And guess what's going to happen if you add all these up? It's going to add up to 120. Excellent. Last one, find two consecutive even integers. Well, n is always the first integer. But think about evens. Evens skip by twos, right? So the next even integer would be n plus 2. That's the second integer, whose sum is negative 66. So n, the first integer, plus n plus 2, the second integer, equals negative 66. n plus n is 2n. So now this is 2n plus 2 equals negative 66. What do you have on both sides of your equation? You have numbers. I'm going to get rid of my 2, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2. Please be careful with your negatives. So now this is 2n equals negative 68. Divide both sides by 2, and we get n equals negative 34. So that means the first integer is negative 34. So if the first integer is negative 34, what's the next consecutive even integer after negative 34? It's negative 32. And guess what's going to happen if you add those up? You get negative 66. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck.